Hello everyone and welcome back to another Power Short from Power365 Solutions. In today's episode I'd like to take you through SharePoint integration with CRM and I'm going to place a slight customization on this. We're going to set up the SharePoint integration firstly against the account and then we'll delve into the sales process. We'll create a lead and that lead is going to be associated to that account and in turn should associate it with the account SharePoint document location that we just created. So let's get into it. Okay, so firstly we need to set up the SharePoint side of life. So all I have created here is a SharePoint site and from that SharePoint site I have gone and created a new document location and called that document location account. This is as much as we need to do on the SharePoint side for now. We can see it's completely empty. We now need to step inside the CRM and make sure we connect it up correctly that way. So if we come inside the app and we come into our advanced settings, we want to go to document management. Firstly, we need to set up that SharePoint site that we just created, and we can see that I've done this here. Once we create a new SharePoint site, we can set it a name. This is very important because this is what we're going to use inside the Cloudflow to link back to. And we've just added in the absolute URL, the one I mentioned a second ago. You can save and close that. Now that we've made the SharePoint site, we need to make the, the document location side. So again, document management, SharePoint document locations. So from here we create new, and again this name here is very important, in this case I've just used the name account because this is the SharePoint document location that each account, when it runs on the Cloudflow, is going to look towards. This is kind of the default one. So we have a default name called account, and then we have that parent site which is the one I've just created previously. So now that we've set up everything on the back end, we need to step into the uh, actual solution itself. And from here, we need to make sure that document management is set up. And this is quite simple. This is just this tick box, so I'll make it slightly larger. Just this tick box here to say document management is enabled on lead and exactly the same on the account. So now document management is set up on both of those. We've set up the SharePoint side with the SharePoint site and the document library. We've set up the CRM side with the SharePoint site and the document library. We can now go ahead and create our Cloudflow. So we start off with the Cloudflow and I've just named this account, Cloudflow create document location. So all we're simply doing when an account is added or modified, I do have a custom field here, which is the PowerShell demo equals true, just so everybody else in the vicinity will not be affected. We initialize the account name, which we are getting directly from the account that was just created. We get that default SharePoint site. Now, if you remember that I mentioned that it was important what the name was in here, I'm using that default one where I just named it my own name. We're then initializing a SharePoint site and we're just taking the first record and setting that as the absolute URL. So we have that initial SharePoint site that we created. And then stepping inside that SharePoint site address, I've tried to make this as dynamic as possible as I go. So we step inside that SharePoint site address. We set the folder path. This is the document location that we created, which is called account. And then I'm just creating a file inside this newly created folder called account name. Obviously that's going to be the variable that's just taken from the account that was created. And then deleting that file, the reason that I use this create and delete file is it becomes quite difficult to create simply a folder. So I find it easier just to create a file and delete that file straight afterwards. The folder is still left there, but the file is removed. We're then finding that document location that we created where the relative URL equals account. Remember this is on the CRM side. So I created that document location against the SharePoint site. In this case, it was just called account. And then we're just gonna add that new document location for the newly created account. You can give it whatever name you like. I here have just gone with a document library for whatever the account name may be. Set the service type to SharePoint. I've set the parent site or document or location, document locations as make sure you put in a slash SharePoint document locations. And then I've just chosen the first document location ID. Regarding the account that was just created, and then finally the relative URL as the account name. So let's go ahead and test that. So if I just open up my app, as you can see, quite a simple app, just four things in here. We have that initial SharePoint site, which we created, and we have the initial document location that we created. So I'm just gonna go ahead and create an account. As I say, this is a very basic at the moment. 
So I'll put the account name, let's go for Euro Car Parts. We'll set a phone number. Address. Make sure we set that PowerShell demo to yes and give that a save. So now that we've created our account, this should go ahead and trigger our flow. So if we just step back into that, we can see that the flow is currently running. And as expected, it's done exactly what we spoke about before. It's found the account. It's gone and found the default SharePoint site. It's then created that file inside the folder, deleted the file, found the initial document location and created a new one. Now just to show you how that looks on the SharePoint side, we can see if we come to the home page of our SharePoint site, in the document library account, we actually have that accounts SharePoint document location there. Obviously nothing inside there at the minute. This is where we're going to have each of our separate leads inside in the future. That's the um, SharePoint side. Inside CRM, if I come down, just give this page a reload and select related. Now we can see the documents tab has appeared. Once we select documents, we should get that name that we created, the document library for Euro car parts. And we can see that that's connected because if I was to select open location, it would obviously take me to the SharePoint side. Perfect, so now we have set up that whenever an account is created, a SharePoint document location is going to also be created against that account. Now the next point I want to step onto is if we were to use the sales process and we would start at the lead, we would create the lead and the lead document location ideally in most common cases with clients is they like it against the actual topic name, so the records name. So if I go and open a lead here, and I'm just gonna create a brand new lead. Now, again, I have a custom field here, which is just called a SharePoint trigger. I'm just going to set that to yes. I'm going to set a first name. Let's just say this is Joe McDonald. Job title, marketing manager. Mobile phone, doesn't really matter at this stage. And... That's the contacts complete. And then this is where I mentioned we want to link them up to the account. So we're actually gonna choose that account that we just created. And we know that that SharePoint document location is already there. So we've chosen the Euro car part. And then finally, I just want to talk about the topic here. So this is the, the, the records name that's gonna stick with it all the way through, depending on how you set up your sales process. But in this case, let's say for instance, that they want to add quite a few pieces of information into this. So if we start off with a 13 liter engine, at 4.2 amps and let's just say for instance that they wanted to add many a special characters they might have dollar sign with 10% ignition now I know in this terms that absolutely does not make sense it may well make sense to one client but in this case what I want to show here is the limitations that you have with creating SharePoint files SharePoint folders or locations uh, by adding special characters so I'm just going to hit save on that and let that cloud flow run in the background then we'll come on to that in a second I'll take you to this uh, article that I found online and this is the invalid characters and URLs in SharePoint so it's a really good document this um, and it quite clearly states the files name file names which have invalid characters therefore it won't be created on the SharePoint side and the same with folder names so we need to try and remove these invalid characters now, as I show the Cloudflow, I'll come on to this and how I've targeted that. There are many ways to do this. This is just one way. It's quite an easy and quick and simple way. Um, and it saves you having to write out a compose and a replace for each separate one. So let's just go and find that uh, Cloudflow. So here we are, this is the Cloudflow. So essentially, when a lead topic is modified um, or is added or modified, this, this is the special characters that I was speaking about. So we're gonna create an array. Now inside this array, I've added in quite a few special characters. 
Now again, this can have as many or as little as required. I've just added in a, a base level here of random ones that I found online. So from that array then, we're going to initialize a topic. Um, and, and at the moment, we're just saying that as the topic that came from the lead itself. We're going to initialize a variable just called replace special characters, come on to this in a second. And then finally, um, initialize a, a var record. Again, I've tried to make these as dynamic as possible and it will all come into place as we move further down. So then we have an apply to each from that uh, array that we just created and we're replacing those special characters from the topic and we're just going to blanket those out. We're just going to just going to remove them essentially. We then set the topic uh, with a reply from that previous one and then finally we step out the apply to each and set that record as the, the overall um, variable topic. We're also initializing a folder and we're initializing a SharePoint site. We then step forward and actually get the account, but we also want to choose the actual columns that we want to pull through and also an expand query. Now what this, this um, field relates to here, this is essentially the relationship between the account and the uh, out the box table, which is the document location. Now how we can find out the name of this relationship is if we actually go inside our environment and we come across to tables, we'll find that table or the entity called document location. If we go to relationships, we find the related table being account, we can then find that name that we need to select to pull back those SharePoint document location um, fields and, and columns. So back to our Cloudflow. From that get account then, all we are simply doing is passing that information. We then pass it through again, slightly different this time. And then the only reason that I've added in a compose first here is quite simply that I just want to pull the first one because, for instance, that sees it more as a list rows. So it may well shove our invoke HTTP request into an apply to each. So for this case, I've just added in a first. So it only pulls back that first SharePoint document location. There is, of course, only one. I'm then passing that information. And then I'm doing an invoke HTTP request. Now, when setting up an invoke HTTP request, you'll get asked two pieces of information. And for those two pieces of information, all you simply need to put in is the URL of the app into both of those. And that will create that connection. So we're then doing a method of a get, and we want the URL of the request being the target from the past information we had just a second ago. From there then, we are then just composing a full URL. This is more just a check for me. There is no reason behind this. It's, it's not used any further down the line. This is just a check to make sure we're getting the correct URL. We're then getting that SharePoint site, again, where the name equals, equals Carl. And then using that, we're gonna set the VAR SharePoint site as the absolute URL. We're creating that file, again, just to give us that folder. And we can see we're stepping inside here. So firstly, we get the SharePoint site. We go to the document library called account. We then step inside that account name. In this case, it's going to be your car part. And then the set record, i.e. the topic of the record, which has had all the special characters removed, is then going to go and create a folder there. Again, we're just using that delete text um, on, the, on the file and delete the file. We then want to get the account document location ID. So what we're doing here is getting a previously created account document location ID. Um, using the row ID of SharePoint document location ID. We're selecting the commons columns. Again, we're doing that expand query. We're then passing that information. And then finally, we want to add that new document location against the actual lead. So the name for this, I've just used a set record, which is of course the, the topic. Again, we need that slash SharePoint document locations against the SharePoint document location ID. We need to set the regarding as the lead so that it actually connects the lead to the document location. And finally, we set the relative URL as the set record. If I just give this a refresh, that should have hopefully triggered on the Joe McDonald lead. And we can take a look at it. Perfect. So we can see that it ran exactly as expected. So here was the initial array with all the special characters. It's taken the initial bar topic, which of course does have quite a few special characters in. We then come down to the replace to each where it's gone through and actually replace those. And then finally, it's gave us that overall set record without those special characters in. It's just simply removed them. So this is the records uh, name going forwards. 
From the Invoke HTTP request, it's gave us the URL of the actual request. And from there, it's gave us what we needed, which was that absolute URL, which quite clearly is the SharePoint site alongside the document location and the account folder that was created. That's then been used. This is again, just a check for me. And this is the um, path of the newly created folder. We've then got that SharePoint site, applied it to each, created a file. So it's actually gone ahead and created that, that file in that folder. Remember, we only want the folder. So we deleted that file next. We've then got the previous uh, account document location and we've added a brand new one. So how that looks inside CRM firstly. If I was to click on the tab files, I can see that I have my own folder listed as the actual topic name. Don't forget that in the lead by default and unless you want to create some crazy customization, the lead name, contact name will always sit as the, the actual overall name, but the actual topic itself obviously sits here and going forwards, this is the name that will be taken. But we can see that folder's there. And if we were to open that location, it would take us to the SharePoint site inside the document library called account, inside the account um, called your car part. And of course, there is our folder. So going forwards from here, essentially, for any lead that is created, a new folder would be created against that lead. And this can obviously be viewed from the SharePoint side, from inside the lead, or of course, if you really wanted to, you can see it inside the actual account. So if we were to come to here and come to documents, we would have a separate folder for each lead that was associated with this account. How that looks then, so the SharePoint site again, we set this up at the very start, that's not changed. The document locations, we can see that we have the, the default one, this account, which any new account is always gonna look up to. We then have that document library for the account that we created. And finally, we have one for that lead against the account. Thank you very much. Hopefully everyone's took something from that. If you have any questions or comments, please pop them below. Otherwise, see you in the next one.